What's with the hat? It's for the party. What party? Ceratogyrus marshalli party. It's a species showcase. Hello tarantula lovers, I'm Alex and you're watching Tarantula Haven. Today I am rehousing my Ceratogyrus marshalli into this tarantula cribs enclosure. And yes, I purchased this myself. This is not a paid advertisement, but I love the tarantula cribs enclosures because they're crystal clear. My Ceratogyrus marshalli is spending a whole lot more time outside of its burrows. So I decided I wanted to put it in something that was going to make it a little bit more visible so that I can enjoy her because most of the time that I've had her, she's been a pet hole. So let's go ahead and get on with it. For this enclosure, I decided that I wanted to decorate it with a skull and try to incorporate it as part of her hide. I tried to do this with my Harpectera pulcherpes, but it didn't really work out that way. Um, I left the skull whole and the Harpectera pulcherpes decided to make her webbing and hide above the skull itself or on top of the skull. So this skull was old and faded because it had been in an aquarium and I decided that I was going to cut the back out of it and the lower jaw to make it sit differently so that it would make it easier for her to get underneath and burrow down into the substrate itself. I keep this species on dry substrate with a water dish, but in the new enclosure I'm using a combination of soil mixture combined with excavator clay and some stone desert. The reason I chose the clay substrate is so that the burrows could harden and not collapse on themselves in the future. Ceratogyrus marshalli, commonly known as the straight horned baboon. This species is native to Africa in Zimbabwe and Mozambique. Females of this species can reach sizes of up to 6 inches or 15 to 16 centimeters. They are not very long lived compared to other tarantulas with a life expectancy of approximately 8 to 10 years. 
Males are smaller, about four inches, and only live about three to four years. This is a very skittish and defensive tarantula. They are very fast and will usually bolt at the first sign of danger, but will become very defensive when cornered. They are capable of stridulating in defense by rubbing the hairs on the chalicera, making an audible hissing noise. I was very reluctant to display her for my video because of their skittish nature. I was sure that she would bolt and I would have a difficult time retrieving her. However, I played it very slow and calm, and fortunately she chose to freeze in one spot rather than try to bolt and hide. I must have done a good job because she didn't even threat display or stridulate at me, even allowing me enough time to take a few photographs. The C. Marshalli can be considered a pet hole. I hardly ever saw her as a spiderling or a juvenile. I only caught glimpses of her at the mouth of her burrow and she would only come out long enough to tackle prey and retreat back to her burrow. However, recently I noticed her spending more time out of her burrow and sitting out on the webbing, so I took a picture and posted it to my Instagram, stating that I needed to rehouse her into a tarantula crib's enclosure so that I could see her more often, which is what I'm doing today. One of the cool features of the C. Marshalli, besides the beautiful markings, is the obvious horns sticking out on the top of the carapace. This is what attracted me most to this species. It is much more prominent than its cousin, the Ceratogyrus darlingi, whose horn tends to swoop backwards rather than straight up. The horn is only present in females and doesn't begin to protrude until about the fourth molt. Males will begin to show a protuberance, but it will not develop into a large horn, but rather stay as a small rounded nub. It's still not definitely known as to what the purpose of the horn serves. According to Rick C. West, the dilator muscles connect to the inside of the horn, and it is believed that it helps in drawing up liquefied food into the sucking stomach more efficiently. It is also believed that the extra surface could potentially serve as extra storage to help it survive periods of drought or lack of food. That went a whole lot better than I anticipated. She is very fast, very bolty, and very defensive. And any time I've ever had to deal with her in the past, I've always had to chase her down. Even when I've put her into the enclosure, she's always run right back out and has tried to take off on me. So I was very pleased that this went as smoothly as possible. Um, I guess I just attributed to her older age. She's a little bit more calm, but also I took it very slow, very gentle with her, and she was not bolty at all. She, in fact, she just kind of sat there, which was a cool thing because I even got to take some pictures 
which, you know, I'll be posted on my Instagram and things like that. But yeah, it's been 24 hours since I've put her in here and she's already started to dig out the little burrow that I made for her and she's made herself a nice little home underneath the skull. I think me cutting the back of the skull and laying it on its side like I did this time instead of the other way when I did my Harpactera pulchra piece, I think that's going to help out a little bit better in her establishing her home inside the skull like I wanted the other one to do, but this one seems to be working out pretty good. I may retouch my Harpactera pulchra piece and see if she'll do it because right now she's staying right on top of the skull. So who knows? I may mess with her. I may not. But yeah, this turned out pretty good. I think I'm going to like the way it's going to turn out. I haven't put any extra decoration or anything like that in there. I may add some rocks and things like that, but for the most part, I'm going to leave it bare bones because I know what she's going to do. She's just going to web up the entire inside of the enclosure and make herself a nice little funnel going into her burrow. And that's pretty much what it's going to be. So if I put anything in there, it's just going to be covered in webbing. And before I go, I'd like to give a huge thank you to Tarantula Cribs. Thank you so much for the enclosure. Yes, I did pay for this one myself, but I do love their enclosures and I do recommend them. So if you'd like to purchase one of your own, you can go to tarantulacribs.com. And if you use the code THAVEN10, you can get 10% off your purchase. And that does it for me today. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please give me a like. If you want to see more, subscribe. If you want to support this channel, I have a Teespring store where I sell Tarantula Haven merchandise. Thank you so much to my Patreon supporters. And if you'd like to become a patron yourself, there's a link down below in the description, as well as all the others. Until next time, keep loving them tarantulas. Tarantulas.